organization. And you are a king. Oh, Gerebo Sahaya. You are a king. That's what the Bible tells us. I'm not flattering you. It's in the word of God. Revelation chapter 1 from verse 5 to verse 6. You find there that he has made you a king and a priest. So you are a king. And so the Bible tells us here that the king was organizing his kingdom. As a king, your kingdom must be organized. Hallelujah. Amen. You have a house, organize your house. Amen. Organize your life. Your life is the life of a king. It should be organized. Amen. Let it be that when your kids grow up, if you have any or you want to have any, that when your kids grow up, they are able to bring out a chron they are able to write a book of chronicles concerning your life. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Absolutely. They can write nice stuff about that this, this, my mommy, this was what she did with her life from this year to this year to this year to that year. They can tell a story about you. That is if the Lord doesn't come. But even if the Lord comes, a book of Chronicles will still be written about your life. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. So the king organized his kingdom. You have things concerning your future. You organize them. So this guy organized that the princes might give accounts unto them and the king should have no damage. When there is organization, there cannot be any damage. Amen. When you organize your life, your life cannot be damaged. Sometimes it's good to organize your friends too. Amen. Even on social media. You can organize them. The ones that have been sending you abusive messages, you have a right to unfriend them. As fast as you can. Now, I, I, I didn't tell you what to do. Okay, glory <laughs> to God. You see, Australians don't like being told what to do, right? You can unfriend people. You can readjust your life and decide, I want to be around the right set of people. I want to make sure that it's those people who send me beautiful things concerning my life. Those people who are concerned about me are the ones I want to have always around me. Those people who are full of love. So you can decide. If you don't organize your farm, weeds will grow inside your farm. If you don't organize your life, weeds will begin to grow around you. And you'll be wondering, what happened to you? Why? Because anything goes. You just accept anything. Likewise, you organize your posts on social media to make sure that they are beautiful posts because sour water and sweet water cannot come out of the same fountain. It's in the word of God. So you can't say, oh, my life is full of health. My life is full of the glory of God. And then suddenly you've posted, mm, I'm having a very bad day. That means you are bringing out sour and, bitter, <laughs> sour and sweet water at the same time. That's not nice. Hallelujah. Tell me about beautiful things come out of you. Yeah, beautiful things that are inspiring, that are inspiring. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us here, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And as a result of that, the king thought to set him over the whole realm. So Daniel was filled with excellence. Excellence was at work in him. How did they know that there was an excellent spirit in him? Was it because the king decided to bring out uh, some PCR tests to check? Is, does this guy have an excellent spirit or not? No. <laughs> it was based on how the, his outward life was looking like. So they examined us. Oh, truly, this person is excellent. I tell you today, you are excellent. Hallelujah. Yeah. You are excellent. How you smile is excellent. How you are looking is excellent. Glory to God. Great. And so then he was to be exalted because an excellent spirit was found in him. And then... And that also tells us too, those of you, because some of you have become entrepreneurs now, you are doing various things. Hallelujah. <laughs> All things work together for good. <laughs> All things work together for good. So they said you can't work well, you, turn, you started employing. Glory to God. And you will only grow bigger and bigger and greater and greater. That's all. Your life can only get better. That's how the children of Israel, that's how God's people are. They try to push them this way. God just makes them better. They push you out. They've just pushed you out into an environment of greater glory. Now you have joy in what you are doing. Previously, there was a boss hanging around you. Now you are the boss handling your own work. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. All things work together for good. They are working together for a good. And for you to make extraordinary progress, just be excellent. Bible says Daniel was preferred because an excellent spirit was found in him. So when you are excellent, you will always be preferred above your peers. Then this Daniel, give me verse 4, thank you. Then this, the presidents and the princes, as a result of this excellence and the favor that surrounded Daniel, 
The Bible tells us that the president's orders, his peers, the remaining two, as well as the 120, they sought to find an occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. They started looking for something that they would say that Daniel had done, just to look for some fault somewhere. The more you make progress, whether it's in business, in work, in academics, whatever, sometimes you just find that something will just tear up from somewhere. Don't worry, you are not the first. The Bible tells us it also happened to Daniel. So they sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, Daniel was faithful, number one, so you be faithful. Neither was there any error or was there any fault found in Daniel. Glory to God. Why? Because the man was excellent. So they couldn't find any fault in the person. You know, sometimes, you know, now that you are earning probably uh, less than $100,000 in a year, I don't want to say less than fifty because some of you have gone way higher than that. Okay, so less than 100 th- Are you higher than that? Yes. Yes. Glory to God. <laughs> the way you guys are, you were very quiet. It's like, Pastor, my own is 30-something thousand. Uh-uh, you've gone beyond 50,000. Even if you are not yet there, you just say, Amen. Yeah. That's how to say it. Glory to God. You claim it by faith. You take it by faith. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> because you will get there and you will surpass it. You get there and you surpass it. So definitely, the Bible tells us, they said this, they were trying to find an occasion, they were trying to find a fault against Daniel. They looked out for errors against him. And so by the time you are earning uh, 50,000, 60, 70, 80, 90,000, the tax man may not come. But you start earning $500,000 in a year. Get ready, you need accountants, you need lawyers, you need tax specialists. Uh, you understand what I'm saying, right? You need them, you, ha- you must have them. Because suddenly you are now at a, a subject matter for public interest. Glory, uh, yeah, tax the rich. You have now joined the one percent at the top. That's where I want, That's where I am. Glory to God. <laughs> among that one percent, and don't fight the one percent. When you are among the ninety-nine percent, stop fighting the one percent if you want to get there. You cannot acquire what you are fighting. You cannot acquire what you are fighting. That's why, you know, if, if, if you are someone who always fights people that are honorable, you become less honorable. You've got to honor those who you find that are honorable. I honor my man of God a lot. Hallelujah. I honor pastor. And that's why I pastor the best I can. Glory to God. I do my best in pastoring. Hallelujah. And I have brethren who are honoring me because you, can, you only reap what you sow. You only reap what you sow. So the Bible tells us that they were trying to find fault against him, but they couldn't find any fault against this man. Then they said, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it concerning the law of his God. If the law of of the kingdom, he hasn't broken any, then definitely we can entrap him using the law of his God. And then they went, they assembled together. The Bible tells us, verse 6, they assembled together to the king and said, does unto him, King Darius... O king, live forever. Verse 7. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, and the princes, the counselors, and the captains. Look at all of them. Presidents, governors, princes, counselors, medical, chief medical officers, ministers of health, presidents, prime ministers, parliamentarians. They have all consulted together to establish a royal statute. I mean, this royal statute must be from heaven. With the kind of people that have just gathered together for this in Davos, it must be from heaven. The fact that there's a law doesn't mean that that law has anything to do with God. Not all laws are from God. The Bible says they all they came and they said, oh, look at the kind of people that have gathered. They consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree, an unchangeable decree, That whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days. They said lockdown was 14 days. These ones, they were worse. They had 30 days. Except of the O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Look at the punishment. Verse 8. Now O king established the decree and signed the writing that it be not changed according to the law of Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Verse 9, 
Bible tells us, remember, while these people were doing this thing, Daniel was one of the presidents. He was one of the presidents. I remember there was something pastor said earlier on this year. He said, your faith shall be tested. Your faith shall be tested. And, and one of the reasons why Daniel's faith was tested like this, remember before now, when you go back, is it in chapter 4 or chapter 3? When you go back, you find that there were three other guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were tested. Daniel was not. So Daniel would have, would have said, hey, God has rescued these ones, but I have escaped this temptation. His own was coming a few chapters later. That's why if you find somebody being tested, don't say, hey, it's because God has found, God decided to punish them. No, 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 no. Don't, because your own may come sooner or later. Glory to God. <laughs> yeah, because those up north in Australia, we're laughing at those down, down south. And say, no, you know, they are there. Yes, it's because God punished them. That's why he put them in Victoria. Mm. So they have Daniel Andrews. Mm. They are not praying enough. Okay. Your own mandate has started. You must be tested. Everyone must be tested. Glory to God. Tell anybody, you must be tested. You must be tested. Everybody must be tested. Your faith will be tested. In these last days, it will be tested. And the truth about your love for Christ will be evident. When your faith is tested. You see, our service of Jesus Christ is not just about when everything is okay. You know, I just got this job. I just got that. I just, hey, I just bought this car. I just this. My visas are all right. Everything is okay. That, that is fine. You can serve God then. But the truth about the love that you have for Christ comes out when you are squeezed. That's why the most important times when you could see that Jesus truly loved mankind was not while he was walking on the earth. Yes, he went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him, but it was on the cross. While he was there, what came out from him? That's when the true test of his love was. When there are challenges in your life, can you still produce love? Or will things change? When you are squeezed by the circumstances of life, will you begin to release curses? You see, whatever you have inside you, if I had a cup that was closed and I put fuel inside the cup, if I squeeze the cup, whatever I have inside that cup is what is going to come out. If there is sand inside the cup, when that cup is squeezed, whatever is inside will come out. And that's why from now you begin to learn how to beautify, how to ensure that your life is loaded with love for God like never before. Your commitment, your faith is stronger than ever before. That even when you are squeezed, whether it's a squeezing of, oh, you won't have a job, oh, you won't travel, oh, you won't that, you say, oh, well, like Paul said in Romans chapter 8, said, nothing shall separate me from the love of Christ. Doesn't matter. Squeeze. Whether, whether death, whether tribulation, whether trial, whether distress, there's nothing up above on the earth, beneath, wherever it is, that will be able to separate me from the love of Christ. Why? Because he had so filled himself with that love. Hallelujah. Yeah. Same thing comes out, even in a home, even in your marriage, even in your home, or among your brothers and sisters. It is not just the I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, you are my brother, you are my sister. <laughs> it's when there's a challenge that we see the true nature of the love that you have inside you. Glory to God. And that love will bubble up inside you. Can somebody say amen? amen. To bubble up inside you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Even if you didn't have it enough, from now make up your mind. I'm going to have love more than ever before. Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands and just say it with me. I have much love than ever before. I am full of love. During this Christmas season and beyond. Love like never before. Hallelujah. Yes. As you do that, the Lord fills you with more. Your prayers are answered. Hallelujah. That's the most beautiful kind of prayer that you can have. It's one of the most beautiful. It's better than, Lord, forgive me because my head has become so black. <laughs> no, say, Lord, I'm full of love. I choose the love way. I choose to shine love all the time. The Bible tells us, wherefore, King Darius, verse 9, sign the writing and the decree. Even though Daniel was in such a privileged position, still they signed this thing against Daniel. 
Look at verse 10. That's where I'm taking you to. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, it was signed. He didn't go and start crying. The Bible didn't tell us he went and started jumping up and down and saying, God, why did you allow this to happen? God, why did you allow? No, 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 no. Look at what he did. When he knew that the writing was signed, he went straight into his house. And his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem. In other words, he faced, there was something remarkable about Jerusalem, not because it was Jerusalem, but because there was a temple in Jerusalem. So his eyes were focused on the house of God. He kept his eyes toward the Lord. The Bible says he opened his windows, being in his bedchamber toward Jerusalem, and he kneeled upon his knees three times a day. They said, don't pray. The guy went back and he went and continued his prayers. And he prayed. And guess what? In a month of thanksgiving, he gave thanks before his God. Hallelujah. He gave thanks before his God. And he did this as he had done before time, as he did before time. In other words, this wasn't just a one-off. He wasn't doing this because the circumstances were tough. He wasn't thinking about how to pray to God just because there are challenges. No. The Bible tells us that this was what he was doing before now. This was his habit. Hallelujah. Maintaining your relationship, an excellent relationship with God is your habit. Can somebody say amen? amen? It's your habit. And so even though there was a big challenge on the ground, he turned his eyes towards Jerusalem. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in the midst of challenges, you are still going to be giving thanks. Glory to God. Someone said, oh, I lost my job. I, I, cannot, I, don't, oh, I lost my job. I don't have a Thanksgiving offering. Huh? Okay, offer your shoe. Yes. I don't, oh, I lost everything. I don't have a Thanksgiving offering. Offer your car. I lost. I don't have a Thanksgiving offering. Well, offer your house. Glory to God. Did I ask for too much? Hallelujah. I'm not even the one asking. Glory to God. So house owners, please make sure you keep coming to church. Hallelujah. You know, mm, somebody say, hey, one day Pastor Tony may just ask me for my house key. Mm, ah, hmm, I better watch how I go to church. Even if I go, I will not sit on the front seat. If you are a house owner, the front seat belongs to you. Glory to God. <laughs> not only the front seat, even the pulpit belongs to you. Hallelujah. So we keep thanking God, regardless of the situation. We keep thanking God like Daniel was a tough situation, but still he kept his eyes towards the Lord, and he prayed as he did before. And last week I told you something. I said, when, you are, when it comes to, to, uh, to, to uh, appreciating things or appreciating people, there are four sets I listed out for you. I said, number one, you appreciate who? God. That's number one. And then I said, number two, you appreciate those who are in the house of God, those who are with you in the house of God. And this order is so important. I know while I was talking yesterday, uh, sorry, on Sunday, after I left, the Holy Spirit was showing me and said, some, some people were wondering, ah, no, 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 my family first. After all, I was born into a family first before I then got born again into this. Uh -uh. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Those in the house of God come next before your biological family, both nuclear and extended. And I remember I mentioned to you, I told you, because these people who you find in the house of God, these are the ones you are going to spend eternity with. These are your true family. And I'll show you from the scripture how Jesus saw it so that you can know I'm not just talking from my brains. When I tell you these things, I'm telling you something that is biblical, not something that is anti-biblical. All right? So I'm telling you exactly how God sees it. First and foremost, you appreciate him. That's why when Jesus taught them how to pray, he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, what? Hallowed be thy name. In other words, appreciating God, extolling God, blessing God, thanking him. And then after him, before other things followed. All right? Likewise, too, when it comes to appreciating people, you appreciate those you find in the house of God. These are the ones you have not just a lifetime relationship with, but an eternal relationship with them. Because when we check out from this earth, as we all will, glory to God, 
I know many people don't like hearing that because they want to just remain here all the days of their lives. But the truth is that we must check out from this earth. Glory to God. Either we check out before the rapture or we check out during the rapture. And we will not miss the rapture. Can somebody say amen? amen. You won't miss, tell someone around you, you won't miss the rapture. Uh, did the person smile back at you or the person just kept a stone face? That stony face can make you to be... <laughs> <laughs> that story face can make you to miss the first flight. And our man of God has warned us, don't wait for second flight. Because between the first and the second flight, what will happen? <laughs> you don't want to be here. The kind of lockdowns you will see by then. Uh, eh? Double mandates. You don't want to be a part of that. Glory to God. First flight, that is, our, that is where we are looking at. First, number one. In fact, I will be at the very front of the plane. The very 